ABS or asset-backed securities are bonds and hence part of fixed income. Uh, unlike the uh, corporate or uh, sovereign exposures, however, uh, they're secured on particular assets and a pool of assets rather than being a general obligation of a company or a government. Asset-backed securities also differ uh, in that an asset-backed securities issuer will often bring several different tranches to the market. Each one will have a different rating and a different return so that investors are able to pick the right risk return for that. The typical type of assets uh, in an ABS are loans uh, or receivables. Uh, the largest category are residential mortgages, but you can get commercial mortgages, corporate loans, uh, car loans, credit card loans, student loans, and more esoteric assets such as tenancy payments on a pub. The largest issuer uh, or the largest market is in the USA, which has about 70% of the market. Following that is Europe, of which the largest market is the UK. Uh, but there are lots of ABS issued from Holland, France, Italy, Spain. There's also a very vibrant market in Australia, and there are smaller markets in Japan, China, Russia, South Africa, to name but a few. We estimate the total market is about $4.5 trillion. Uh, the largest asset class within that is residential mortgages at about $1.9 trillion. We think there are in the region of about 300,000 different bonds. So it's very diversified, very global, uh, and it's quite a difficult market to find your way around. The fear of losses from subprime mortgages caused liquidity to dry up, caused uh, prices to fall quite dramatically, followed by, following which there was a large number of downgrades, uh, particularly of the subprime sector, uh, and ultimately there were losses indeed in that, in that asset class. What we can see now, looking back with the benefit of hindsight, uh, and there have been a number of studies conducted by rating agencies, is that the, the final tally of losses in subprime mortgages or non-conforming mortgages, as they call them in the US, is going to be about 11%. So that's for all mortgages, mortgage-backed securities issued from about 2000 to 2014. Uh, that can be compared to the European loss rate, which is less than half a percent, so it really truly was a US subprime problem. But also there were very significant losses in CDOs. CDOs took the lowest tranches of subprime mortgage bonds and repackaged them again. Now there the losses are expected to, to exceed 30%, so quite significant. But if you compare that to CLOs, which are securitizations or ABS or corporate loans, the loss rate on that, uh, both in the US and Europe, is expected to be less than a quarter of a percent. So it truly is a US subprime mortgage problem. There have been a number of uh, additional controls applied to the market since the crisis. The first applies to the uh, underlying asset class, and that has been there has been a definition of what they call a qualifying mortgage, and that applies to most markets. So this gets rid of the self-certification that borrowers made to their income and to the value of the asset. There's also been uh, specific controls applied to securitization, and the, the major one is to apply skin in the game. Uh, this get, removes the originate to, to distribute model, where small originators of uh, assets um, simply sold all their product in an ABS and weren't around to carry the can. Nowadays, every originator is required to have at least 5% of the assets uh, on their balance sheet. Rate agencies have also been controlled. They are now required to have at least two rate agencies on every deal and to be much more transparent about the, the information that they have analysed. The final piece also is that the buyers of ABS in the form of financial institutions, banks and insurance companies had the amount of capital they had to put against uh, ABS significantly increased. That has recently changed back again because the regulators in all countries have now defined something called the high quality securitization. Uh, in Europe they call it simple, transparent and comparable. And here they've identified the right features that they want in an ABS and they've now dramatically reduced the capital that banks and insurance companies need to hold against it to thereby encourage them into the right sort of ABS. The main reason for investing in ABS is that typically they provide a higher return than regular fixed income uh, of a similar rating. We estimate that for a single A or triple B rated asset, the 
additional return could be anything up to about 1%. The reason they, they return more is because typically ABS is less liquid than regular fixed income, but also it has what we call a complexity premium because it's quite complex to understand and therefore requires additional return. Another very good reason for investing in ABS is that ABS is typically floating rate at the current very low interest rate environment. This will allow quite a lot of protection in the event interest rates rise and the coupon that you get on your ABS should rise as interest rates rise. Finally, ABS has a low correlation to the return on fixed income. So adding all three pieces together, you can potentially enhance the return or, or reduce the risk of your portfolio. Um, also, at the same time, by providing some interest rate protection and reducing the volatility of returns on your portfolio. Liquidity actually is, is quite good at the very highly rated tranches uh, of an ABS that are more junior and uh, less well-weighted or sub-investment grade weighted asset, assets. Uh, it, it's quite illiquid. Um, so this is just a feature of the ABS market that means it justifies a higher return. The key to look for in a manager of an ABS is to address the risks with an ABS. Uh, one of the first things is it is very complex. It's a very credit intensive product. So it's very important to have a, an ABS manager who understands all of the risks and has a very credit intensive process. The other key aspect, as we've mentioned, is that it's slightly less liquid. Every uh, ABS is, is hand negotiated, every trade is hand negotiated as it's an OTC market. Uh, and therefore you need to have a manager who can access the market both to uh, make the investments and also to be able to liquidate the investments as and when they, they, they need to do that. You can contact anyone at uh, HSBC Global Asset Management to, uh, to understand more about it. We have published uh, white papers on the subject to, to show what happens in the ABS market and provide some of the statistics that we've talked about here. We manage three different strategies. We manage an investment grade strategy, a crossover strategy and a sub-investment grade strategy, uh, all of which have good fact sheets. Uh, and finally, for a more independent approach, uh, you could always go to the rating agencies who publish research on each subsector within ABS uh, and indeed publish research on every ABS they rate.